weeks ago I did a video showing you how we are using up some of the foods from our freezer and our cupboards and that's what this video is about today. Hi I'm Samantha, this is the channel Trying To Get By, if it's your first time here, welcome, if not, welcome back and if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel, I'm sure you will enjoy it. As I was saying, we've got loads of foods in the food in the fridge and the freezer and the cupboards that we got from our May haul, check out that video and I'm just trying to use up whatever we've got and save us going out and buying more stuff. Anyway, I've got three recipes for you, so take a look. Right, tonight is a throw it in the slow cooker tea. We have got these casserole vegetables which I got in my one of my May Oleo hauls. I will link the video to that haul um, in the description. Have a look at that one, it was a really good one. So in there, these are just straight out of the freezer. Oh, there's quite a few spuds in there. We're gonna throw in a few extra potatoes. We're gonna throw in some broccoli that we've got. We are going to put in some um, vegetable stock, which I cannot get the lid off with one hand. So we're working on that. So this is my vegetable stock that I get from uh, Unicorn Grocery in Charlton, which I absolutely love. So that's my bullion stock. Then I have got this really great um sauce now obviously we don't use worcester sauce because it's got fish in it with us being veggie but i got hold of this this is mushroom ketchup now it's not ketchup like thick like tomato ketchup it's a more liquidy thing but it has got such a great flavor so i'm going to put a glug of that in so that'll give you that savory flavor that you would get from worcester sauce then in my jug by the sink because if we fill the hot water, we fill the jug at the same time to save. You know, when you get that first bit of water from the hot tap, it's not warm. So we just save it in a jug to use for other things. So we're going to pour it in there. I think that should be enough. We're going to pop the lid on. This is on high. And we're just going to leave it to go for a good few hours. And I'm going to go off and do some other stuff. So this mixture has been on for about five hours. About 20 minutes ago, I just added a little bit of corn flour and a bit of salt and a little bit of mixed herbs for just to thicken it up very slightly. So we are going to go into the bowl with this. Oh, it looks so nice. So there we go. And we have also got some little meatballs that we got we got these reduced if you look on our july yes july um shopping our shopping haul for july these meatballs are on there so we're just going to pop a few of these on the top Whoop. there we go and that is our tea for tonight pretty quick pretty easy Meatballs took 10 minutes in the air fryer. I love my air fryer. Let me know in the comments if you have an air fryer and what your favourite thing is to cook in your air fryer. So I saw this recipe on Frugal Fit Mum's YouTube channel and I thought, do you know what, let's give it a go. So it's basically, she called it skillet lasagna. So it basically consists of, now her recipe was onions, uh, beef mints, uh, a jar of um, sauce, the cottage cheese and the pasta. Um, I'm going to, I don't buy jarred sauce, so I'm just going to um, use my tomatoes and add some herbs and things to it. But basically, she put onions and mint in a pan, cooked it down, added her tin sauce, sorry, a jarred sauce, added pasta, added cottage cheese and mixed it through. And I think the idea is that the cottage cheese had the creaminess that you would get from the bechamel. I'm going to do similar, obviously I'm using my meat-free mints, um, I'm adding peppers, I'm going to add some mushrooms that are in the freezer, and we're just going to give it a bit of a go. So first of all, all these are going in the pan, 
just to be cooked off for a little bit because my mince won't take as long because I'm not essentially getting a raw product and cooking it off. I am just heating my mince through. So I will cook this for a few minutes and then add the rest of the ingredients. Right, next in as my veggies cooked is my meat free meat. I've not got a massive amount of it because I'm more of a, I like my veggies. And I need to go and get my mushrooms out of the freezer. Mushrooms are in and they are frozen solid. So I'm just gonna warm these up, cook them down for a few minutes before adding my tomatoes. Okay, tomatoes are going in. Whoop. Now I've mentioned before, and I don't know if anybody agrees with me, let me know in the comments below if you agree with me, that tin tomatoes, when they are plum tomatoes, are, I don't know, I just find them not as watery as chopped tomatoes. Yeah, I just, I, I've used to get chopped tomatoes because I was thinking, oh, it saved me a job, you know, just poking these. But all you got to do is just stab them a bit with your spatula. Um... But they, yeah, I've noticed they're just a bit watery, so that's my reason for, for, for preferring whole tomatoes. Right, we're going to go in with some seasonings. We are going in with some garlic powder and some onion powder. We have got some oregano and I think Chris is going to just walk through the door as I am busy filming so he will possibly interrupt we shall see and this is some basil this is some home dried basil and that's just going to go in get a bit of a mix around and then we're going to add our cottage cheese Right, I've just thrown my pasta in and about half a tub of cottage cheese just giving this a bit of a mix of row I've probably made too much pasta as I often do and I'm just gonna let this cook through either that or I need a bigger bigger skillet what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put some grated cheese on here and probably stick it under the grill now that's not something frugal fit mum did but hey ho a recipe is a suggestion and I suggest it needs a bit more cheesiness I think I might actually put a bit more cottage cheese in there as well actually I think we'll go in see if I can get it out without there we go full tub go for it do you know the trick about storing your cottage cheese upside down in the refrigerator if you store your cottage cheese upside down it will last longer and stay fresher longer. Apparently it's something to do with it creates a vacuum seal inside the container. So your cottage cheese will last longer. I have had cottage cheese go for 10 days past the best before day on the front and has been absolutely fine. That's a handy little tip there. Anybody else do that? Let me know. Um, other tips are appreciated on how to keep your food lasting longer. Maybe I should do a video on that. Give me some suggestions and we'll see if we can throw together a video on ways to make your food stay fresher for longer. This has been under the grill and I'm gonna give this a little taste and see what we think. This is gonna be hot. Mmm, okay. I'm not going to say it's lasagna. Still darn tasty though. Yep. Add that to the um, the recipe book. Fabulous. Right, here's what we're looking for for tonight's tea. I've had a bit of a root in the freezer. This is a bag of coleslaw vegetables that I got and it's... You know, I just chucked them in the freezer. So there's just the veggies. There was no sauce with this. I got this on, um, I think it was in an oleo. Yeah, I think it was on in, a, in that. Yes, it was in that really big oleo haul I got. Um, 
a couple of videos ago um, have a look at that I will link it in the description box so I'm going to use those we've got some corn pieces I found some some rice noodles got some coconut milk I think we're going to throw it together and create some kind of stir fried Asian flavoured dish we'll have a look I'll see you I'll get on Okie dokie, so I have left my veggies to defrost out of the freezer. These are going to be very wet. This is a smoky pan. This is going to steam and sizzle quite a lot. But what we want to do is get rid of all this water. So we are just going to fry this off until all the water has evaporated before I start adding any other flavours. Okay, this has dried out quite a lot and I have decided that I have still got some frozen mushrooms left. I'm going to throw those in. I'm not going to worry too much about how long they're going to take to cook. They will defrost really quickly while this is cooking. And now I'm going to add some of my flavours. So I have got my ginger and garlic. So can't have too much of that so that's going to go in with a good heating teaspoon in a bit I'll give that a little mix around then I have got some miso paste which is really tasty this is a white miso I'm going to go in with a teaspoon of that don't waste any then I haven't got any lemongrass, but I'm going to get a bit of lemoniness, lemoniness, I should say, with a bit of lemon juice. Not traditional, but this is called using what you have. And it will still create a lemony tang to it. It won't be the same as lemongrass, but it will still work. So we will just fry that off. I'm then going to throw in my... Um, corn pieces which are yummy and these will absorb a lot of flavour as well so that's gone in so we're definitely on using it up packets today this will be three less things out of the freezer okay now my favourite bit the coconut milk so we have got some reduced fat coconut milk I don't know if I've ever mentioned before but I have heard it is cheaper to buy full fat coconut milk and just water it down yourself and that's meant to make so you'll you know say if you did half a can of um, your normal coconut milk and did half again of water then you have got your reduced fat coconut milk and you're getting so let's say this costs 90p for a can and the other costs 90p for a can you're almost getting double the quantity if you reduce it yourself so i think i may be doing that in future and seeing how that goes now obviously because i have got red onion and red cabbage <laughs> this is going to be a little bit pink so i'm going to throw in some chili to get a bit of spice so instead of a Thai green curry or a Thai red curry, we're having a Thai pink curry. <laughs> it will still taste delicious, I'm sure. It just tittles me now that we're having this pink, pinky curry. Right, I'm going to actually turn this down low because I like it to have a little while um, for the corn to cook. So if you were using chicken, it'd take a little while for the chicken to cook. And it just means that the flavors will all get marinated and absorbed into what we are doing. So I'm gonna leave that on low for a few minutes. This has just cooked two more minutes just to marinate the flavors and make sure that my um, corn is heated through. Like I say, if you are using meat, cook it for a bit longer or cook your meat prior to this in a different pan. Um, and then we're, all we're going to do is go in with our noodles. These are just two of the squares of noodles. I just poured boiling water over them and then drain them and then that's it. And they can go straight in. They are fabulous because these are nice and hot already. I don't need to 
heat them through with the sauce it's just a case of mixing it together the one thing I do like to do is because I find that these are just so so long is I will just give them a bit of a a cut because I can't be dealing with the, the super 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 long noodles they just get a bit hard to eat and then you end up slopping it all over yourself so that is our quick stuff out of the freezer tea I'm gonna have a little taste and as usual if there are noodles involved you don't get to see me eat it because I don't particularly want you to see me <laughs> slobbering noodles all over the place so off camera taste mmm that's really nice we have the ginger coming through I can taste a bit of lemon nice and spicy nice and coconutty this will fill our bellies very nicely for tea I hope you enjoyed those three recipes I enjoyed all three of them I think my favorite was probably the it's gotta be frugal fit mum's skillet lasagna as I said didn't taste much like lasagna but still was really really tasty and in my book you can't go wrong with pasta uh noodle dish well apart from being a crazy color which was quite chris was a bit like what what's going on with this it tasted really good and the slow cooker dish at the beginning always good to cook in the slow cooker just saves so much time and hassle and you can be doing something else while you are making it but we've still got other stuff left in the freezer that we are going to continue to focus on and see what we're going to make next time. If you've got any suggestions of things you'd like to see me cook, please let me know in the comments below. As I said before, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time.